Alrighty. Um, beehive monitoring system update. So, number of problems I had with the original system. Number one, um, big thick cable going into the strain gauge of the very, very fine cable. Uh, I had thought I had enough strain relief on it with a couple nested layers of various sizes of heat shrink, but I did not. It was very uh, cantankerous. I'd bump it and it would break connection and I'd get totally silly readings out of my for my weight because it, the, it went open circuit. So I 3D printed some strain relief, so the actual uh, sheath on this big thick cable comes a fair way into there and then the joins in there wrapped up in some capped on you can see the very fine cables that go inside the strain gauge there. So that's that problem solved, hopefully. Uh, problem two. Um, I'm using, a, oh, I was using for the power supply, this circuit here. Ignore the dud. Um, low max power. So this is a lithium polymer battery out of a quadcopter. One cell. Um, connected to this little charge controller, connected to this switch mode voltage regulator. And I've got a shitload of these, I've got lots and lots, they're great. You put some volts in, you adjust this potentiometer here, this multi-turn potentiometer, and you get volts out there. They're great uh, for some things. So I was using this to cut the power from the solar panel from 20 odd volts down to 5 so I could charge the controller. This also does um, over discharge and overcharge protection, undercharge and overcharge protection, I guess that's what you'd say. Um, it's alright. Um, but the problem I was having is that these things provide reasonably good voltage, but reasonably consistent voltage. It's a bit noisy, um, it's got like a 30 millivolt um, swing to it, which is fine for running digital stuff. Digital stuff doesn't care, but analog stuff cares a lot. And they also depend on temperature, so as they get hotter, your voltage changes, which is no good if you're me trying to measure a like four millivolt signal out of a strain gauge, um, and because the analog digital converter I'm using has a built-in 2.0048 volt reference, I think that's right. It's got its built-in high precision voltage reference. Um, any external voltage fluctuation is a big disaster. Um, so to solve that, I've got a very low quescent current 3.3 volt linear regulator there um, to supply the analog voltage regulation for the strain gauges the um, op amp and that's it and all of the logic all of the digital stuff is powered by one of those cheapo switch mode regulators down inside there um, so I've taken the battery out of the whole thing um, because the linear regulator needs 5.5 volts and a fully charged lithium polymer cell is 4.2 volts. Um, so I've gone back to good old lead, lead acid battery and somewhere, here we go, charge controller. So that'll go into my solar panel and charge up the lead acid battery and it'll power this. It won't be quite as neat and self-contained but um, I'll get 12 volts into it rather than 4.3, uh, 4.2 somewhere. My voltages will be happy. Now I'm at the moment I'm just powering it off this ATX power supply there. Um, I've also added a little um, resistor divider. There's a pair of resistors in there so I can monitor the voltage um, of the power supply. So I can watch the battery go flat over time. Which is exactly what I've done for... Um, where is it? It's here somewhere. Exactly what I've done. Oh, come on, Chrome, you're supposed to be the fast browser. See, this is the voltage of the one in my roof. It goes do 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 do, and then I charge it up, and then it declines again. So I haven't got a solar panel on this one that's just running off a little cylindrical um, lithium ion battery. Um, but yeah, so I'll box all this crap up, and once the silicon's dry, so these are clamped and siliconed in this little very waterproof and that will go on top. Um, I printed this little handy dandy thing, I'm not sure if I've shown this in a video before, 
Let's get it focused. So it's basically a in-system programmer. So these things go to my breadboard and this pushes down on top of a, a ESP8266. Like, it's not an ESP8266. So let me just say this open. So this just neatly fits over the top and all the pins touch. So you just go boop and hit program on the software and it will dump the firmware and my code into it. it makes setting them up much simpler. Um, I should probably do it with proper pogo pins because these are a bit of a pain in the ass to get to touch all pins at once, but it works alright. Um, I also bought um, a couple other nifty bits and bobs. Oh no, I just threw it under the table. This is similar to those crappy switch mode power supplies, but A, cheaper, and B, um, they've got a single turn pot to set the, the output voltage. Um, I, they're, they're pretty good. Um, I set one to do 5 volts and put in 7 to 30 volts, and it stayed. It gave me a, a decent 5 volt output. And the other thing I bought was an actual Node MCU board which is basically the, the ESP8266 but all of the voltage regulators and the USB interface chip and a reboot button and, and it's on a proper dip pin spacing so you can put it into a breadboard as opposed to these things which have a one mil spacing which doesn't go into your standard breadboard because breadboards are imperial um, so I'm going to be putting all this back out under the beehive soon. Well, I'll put it under my static weight and run it for a couple of days to check that the um, the vaults are being good and all that. Okay, bye-bye.